It's no secret that OEMs are under pressure from the EPA to reduce their carbon footprint. And OEMs are doing this in every way possible, such as taking weight out of vehicles, aerodynamics, drivetrain efficiencies, and yes, even lower viscosity fluids. A lot of OEMs in the turbo diesel world have been going from 15W40 as their primary recommendation to 10W30, but in general in the marketplace in all automotive, lower viscosity fluids are becoming more popular. We dive into what this means for you as a vehicle owner in this episode of Amsoil Garage. <music> Hey guys, I'm Greg Jones for Engine Builder, and today we're covering the topic of lower viscosity fluids in newer vehicles and what you need to know to properly protect your vehicle's engine. OEMs are moving to lower viscosity fluids because they're finding efficiencies in reducing the work it takes to pump fluids within the engine. If you compare the viscosity of a 15W40 to the viscosity of a 0W20, they're dramatically different. What OEMs are testing and proving to themselves is that lower viscosity can yield fuel economy improvements. Now, on a dyno in a controlled atmospheric environment, you can see those gains. However, when you bring in the real world, those gains are quickly lost by a multitude of factors such as people's different driving styles, a tank of bad fuel, a 25 mile per hour headwind, and so on. All of these real world conditions start to snuff out any real differences you're going to measure in the change in viscosity between that 15W40 and 0W20. While the real world may cancel out most of those fuel economy gains from lower viscosity, it hasn't stopped OEMs from engineering engines to accept those lower viscosity fluids, and in that case, it's all about engine design and engine clearances. When you look at bearing clearances to journals, you have a specific clearance in there that you want oil to fill so that you don't have metal to metal contact. You have this nice wedge of oil that pushes those two apart and your engine parts ride on a constant hydrodynamic film of oil. If I design my clearance for an eight weight oil but I put a 40 weight oil in it, the engine's gonna quickly destroy that oil to try to ram it through all those little tight clearances and it's gonna take a lot of energy to do so. On the flip side, if I take an engine that's clearanced for a 40 weight oil and I put an 8 weight oil in it, I may have some problems maintaining a lubrication wedge, so I may have some wear problems. Again, the idea is to get better fuel economy, but not every person cares about fuel economy if it means more wear in the engine or poor performance from the engine. For instance, most 3 quarter ton truck guys probably aren't towing a ton of weight behind them, but the 1 ton guys probably are. And most of those trucks are utilizing a 10W30 oil and can tow somewhere in the neighborhood of 30,000 pounds. It's highly likely that oil is getting pretty hot and pretty thin, but that's the guidance from the OE because they care more about fuel economy than wear protection. Every truck manual will give you a chart that's based on temperature. It'll let you know what viscosity oil you can use depending on the temperature outside. For example, you could use a 5W40 in this temperature range, a 15W40 in this temperature range, or a 10W30 in this temperature range. And many times, 80% of that is overlapping. You can use a 10W30, 15W40, and 5W40 for most people in this country, but there are differences in how those oils protect the engine. The 5W40 will definitely give you better cold temperature startup protection, and if you're a person that lives in the northern half of the country and you want to only run one oil through the winter time or one oil through the year, then pick the oil that's gonna give you the best broad range of protection, which is 5W40. If you're a guy that lives in the southern half of the country, the difference between 5W40 and 15W40 really aren't that dramatic. So buy what's most cost effective. And if you're a guy that just runs around with an empty truck all the time, then you don't really have to worry about the heat that's going into the oil from the engine. The viscosity on a 30 weight is probably just fine. However, if you're a guy who tows 20,000 pounds around all the time, I would recommend you ignore the OEM's 30 weight recommendation and stick with a 40 weight. Your engine's gonna see a lot of heat, and as that heat goes up, the viscosity goes down. So you're better off starting with a higher viscosity to give you more film thickness and better protection. 
Lastly, if you're a guy who wants the very best protection for his engine and doesn't really care about fuel economy, then stick with the 40 weight oil. It'll again give you the better film thickness, wear protection, and better longevity for your engine. It really comes down to what you want out of your vehicle and its engine. Do you want the 1% fuel economy improvement that you're going to get between a 10W30 and a 15W40? Or do you want the better wear protection that the 15W40 is going to provide for your engine? In my experience, 99.9% .9 of people are going to want their engine to last as long as possible. So give me the better wear protection, give me the 40 weight. Well, that does it for this episode of Amzilla Garage. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. Visit amzilla.com for all your vehicle's fluid needs, and for more engine content, visit enginebuildermag.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.